Okay. The uh, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I do. I, I Need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Adopted here by agenda is set. Uh, administrative. We have a sixty-minute time slot for today's meeting, but we have a lot of information to cover. It's a six-page agenda. So, with our talking points, if we all could please be as concise as possible. If there's anything we need to take offline, we'll do that and just do follow-ups later on. Uh, the last boarding meeting we did held was in March 8th, and that was predominantly uh, dominated by the discussion of the Cornwall Social Club. We'll talk about that briefly today. Okay, so let's just jump right into board reorganization because we're going to get things moving on that. Uh, the following, everything we're going to talk about today has already been pre previously discussed with the Orange County Department of Public Works Commissioner, Eric Denega. He's fully in alignment with everything we're doing and also fully provides concurrence with all our changes. Uh, let's start off with right now. It's very unfortunate. Erica, unfortunately, had to resign from the board for acting position. And we're going to talk about what zero tolerance means going forward. Uh, she's been the chair for the last five years. She has done a, a ton for, this, uh, for the area here relative to restructure and transition Bayview Dam Lake area, specifically the community. Not in just, it's not just a great lake community, but one of the most positive and desirable family, people-oriented communities that I know of to live. So Erica, what you've done for us is extremely commendable and it, quite honestly, you can't be replaced. So I appreciate everything you have done. Uh, your, personal, your personnel skills and abilities folks on making this place enjoyable for everybody. And it's an extremely great loss. Uh, what jumps right to my mind is that old uh, analogy that if you take a bucket of water and you put your hand in the bucket of water, for the average person, you take your hand out, you don't notice a change. Unfortunately, when you took your hand out, it's gonna leave a hole for all of us. So, uh, uh, we concur. <laughs> yeah, you. we don't need to make a motion to accept your resignation, but thank you. The uh, you will, Eric. I deeply appreciate the fact you have offered to assist us in the background, helping with the transition and any of the focus areas, including the beach opening, especially. So I appreciate your continued focus in that area, and the community, I'm sure, is very thankful for that. Okay. Uh, let's move into, we've got to fill some board positions in accordance with the uh, bylaws right now. So we're gonna have to vote back in a chair, uh, vice chair to fill those spots. So do I have a motion for a chair position? I move that Wally Bowles be appointed uh, chair for the board. Okay, do I have a second? Yes, I'll second that. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do I have a motion to fill the vice chair position? I will uh, move to have Chris Dunn be vice chair. I understand Chris Dunn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. And Larry, you're good with retaining the secretary position. That's good. And as we discussed, one of the things we want to try to do today is capture as we go through any uh, action items or any follow up items we need to capture. Excuse me. Okay. And uh, Lastly, then we now have a vacant spot. We have a seven uh, spot board. We have the ability to appoint an individual into it. We had an individual who has a very, very strong background and can bring a lot to the uh, table to help the board out. Her name is Diana Smith. She actually had all her paperwork filled out, sent it to the DPW last year uh, to actually run to be on the board. And unfortunately the paperwork got misplaced, mishandled, whatever the case, it didn't get in time. So she didn't get voted in back then. So, but she did offer now to step back in to fill Erica's position. So with that, I'd like to, I'd like to put on a table a motion to fill that spot with Diana Smith. Is there a second? Yes. And all in favor? Aye. And Diane, are you online? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for offering. I deeply appreciate it. You want to tell us just a couple, one or two sentences about your background? Um, my background is I'm an industrial engineer, operations management. So I do a lot of, um, um, uh, I'm putting on the spot. I'm at a baseball game. I apologize. Um, I just do a lot of planning. I try to find the best, most efficient way to do things. So I'm hoping to help the board in that respect to kind of streamline things and make sure everybody's working on what they should be working on. Very good. That's awesome. And uh, do you accept the uh, nomination to fill that position? 
I do. Okay, thank you very much for that. One thing with this particular board, we're a seven person board. We're not one person. Everybody here is polars and it's very, very synergistic where one plus one is not two, it's three or four. So we're very, very strong. And Dan, I know for sure you're gonna bring a lot to the table, just like everybody else on the team has been doing. So I deeply appreciate you offering to continue and help us. Sure. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about zero tolerance. Board members is a unpaid volunteer position. Although you are elected into it, it is an unpaid volunteer position where the individuals of the board dedicate countless hours and energy to maintain and improve in our lake community. Um, with that being said, going forward, absolutely no harassment of any kind is going to be tolerated and it will immediately be turned over to local police departments at that point. If there's any harassment of any fashion, it's going to happen. We actually have Steve Bedidi in the room with us today and he's shaking his head. Yes, he will absolutely support us with that. Uh, you're with the New Windsor Police Department? Yeah. Town of Cornwall. Mm -hmm. So, yep, he has it covered, Cornwall and New Windsor. <laughs> So harassment, again, it's very unfortunate what did happen in the past, and I'm sure it's never going to happen again, again, we're going because we will take it very, very, very serious going forward. Uh, Annette, anybody want to add anything? No, again, you know, we're all very sad to see Erica um, leave the position. We appreciate all the great things that she's done over the years, and, uh, you know, we look forward to continuing to carry the torch and uh, make the community be the best that it can be. So just wanted to add that in. Thank you, Larry. Okay, moving into board communications. Um, we have a lot of questions, a lot of challenges with Facebook relative to the residents of Beaver Dam Lake uh, Facebook page. Let me be clear that this is not a formal, it does not associate in any way with the board. We do not control that Facebook page. So please don't try to get in touch with us to say, hey, can you give me access to it? That is, we're not affiliated with that. Uh, that is not our formal method of communications. We will use it periodically as a ancillary method of trying to get information out there, but we understand it is not the formal method of communication. Uh, we have absolutely no influence on who is permitted to join the page. So and be clear on that. The primary method of communication, as it always has been in the past, way before Erica was involved, way before Erica was involved, is the... Uh, uh, going through the email system with the BDL board at gmail.com, which is for residents only. So if you would please, that is the, if you want to communicate with us, that's how you do it through the email address. Uh, okay. The aren't in addition to that for postings or posting of our meeting minutes, as well as any of the videos, as well as any documentations and any surveys, uh, that will be posted that we have the what's called the Orange County Department of Public Works website, and there is a section in there for Beaver Dam Lake. You'll find all the documents in there. Uh, to meet the New York State Open Laws meeting, we will always make sure we have four people as a minimum here in the building to meet for them. Uh, but we also, because the residents really, really favor it, we're going to continue doing the uh, Zoom uh, account. So that way we could telecast this or everybody look at it now and they could also review it later. And so right now we're working with the DPW to put that in place. And if I could just say, well, you know, and I don't think that anybody could argue with the fact that Zoom actually increases the amount of people that can participate, not just view, but participate in the meeting, um, because we can all go in the past, unless it was something large and looming, how many people are normally here? Yep. A handful. Yep. So. You're, you're right. We have eight, over 800 households in the area. And right now we have basically uh, two households being represented right now in the building and a lot more online. So I appreciate that. Uh, DPW interface. Um, we have we, we have an agreement with uh, the Orange County Department of Public Works, Eric Denega, the commissioner, as well as Tra Travis Seewald that we are going to do quarterly meetings with them. We've had one back in February. Uh, the next one will be now next week with them. But we did do a, a spot check with Eric Denega back in April, I guess it was. And that was to specifically talk about the uh, Cornwall Social Club to make sure they were fully aware of our concerns and they offered to actually jump in and take actions through their own channels. So we deeply appreciate the DPW's support on that. 
And like I said, the next meeting with DPW will be next week. Um, I am going to be on that call with uh, Eric Denega and Travis. Does anybody else have time to be on that call with me? Uh, as long as we have time. Um, what time is it? What time is it? Uh, Eric, do you have the time? Is that 11 o'clock? The meeting right now is scheduled for the 18th at noon. At noon? Yes, I can be there. Okay. I can. Yeah, the only two of us can be on that call, though. So uh, my teacher good. lunch allows for it. So okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, so Chris and I'll take that then. If it was eleven a.m. I'd say no. But. Okay. The uh, we were planning on talking about the budget in great detail today, but unfortunately, the county has not provided us their input for the uh, budget at this point. So nothing really to discuss relative to the budget. Eric, could you have anything to add? No, the DPW has said that they will get um, their contributions to us by mid-May, which is um, estimates for things like the bills we pay in the building and salary increases for our maintenance gentleman who's hired through DPW. Okay. <coughs> okay thank you for that. Okay, just to briefly talk about rules and regulations. There is an antiquated document out there, which we will be revising. It's the Orange County Local Law 8 of 1991. Um, that is our current rules and regulations for residents to follow. So please, if uh, you're a resident, take time to make yourself familiar with it, especially if you're a new resident in the area. You can access that through the Orange County DPW website. Um, this month, uh, actually just last week, as we have been for the past couple of years, there's a conference uh, put on by New York State. It's uh, called, referred to as Nice Follow. We had a couple of members attend it. What was that last Friday and Saturday? Okay. And the board members that attended was Jason, Fred, Molly. Yeah, that was it. Molly attended. Because of a sick dog. Pardon me? That was it because of a sick dog. Fred is referring to, <laughs> he's referring to my 19 and a half Chris. year old. How, how she doing? Yeah. He's yeah. had a seizure, but he's still going. Well, okay. They take priority, so <laughs> <laughs> fully understand it. Thank you for bringing him up. <laughs> Hey, okay. On, okay. Does anybody have any brief discussion or input they'd like to bring up about what they got from Nice Follow? Jason, you want to say something about it? Yeah. Um, I actually attended a conference on Loom Optics, and that is the microscope tool that we help test and get off the ground. They, their app is going to go live in June. I think it would be a beneficial tool to identify if, what types of algae are in the algae blooms so we can know if. The ones that could produce the toxin or not, so whether or not you can keep children or not. Okay. Okay. And in addition to that, there was some, as they do every year, there was some very interesting meetings on harmful algal blooms, invasive species, DEC grants. In fact, they had almost a full afternoon on different aspects of DEC grants, uh, and not just for invasive species, but for anything uh, involving uh, protection of the area. Now, if uh, one thing that, that Jason failed to mention, but he part of was we had the training for the CSLAP uh, participants at that. Jason attended the, the training, so now, which we'll allude to later, we now have an additional uh, member on CSLAP that can participate in the eight samplings this summer. Okay. If I could just ask, you had oh, mentioned. Did you, get did you get the information yet? Yes, I'm all good. Uh, yeah, I, that's something that's forthcoming in a couple of weeks. Yeah, alternate site. Um, but I had a question based on, um, you said other methods for grants. Uh, by any chance, was there anything about tributaries? Uh, they touched on uh, the uh, speedies uh, point source uh, permits, but they didn't really get into tributaries very much. So it's more of a broad a thing of what you, who you contact. And who is registered. So spe meaning speedies, is, it's already a registered license discharge point. Yes. Everybody knows about it. These aren't covert dumping areas or so to speak. Right. So Right. And it was a matter of contact information for additional information from them. And we already have a contact person because of the grants that we're working on right now. Okay, very good. We're going to talk about the grant later on the yeah. agenda. Noted. I plan on following up. Okay. Thank you. Do you go with that, Chris? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dam update. The we have periodic inspections that is being conducted by the Department of Public Works. They performed one this past Tuesday on May second. Um, I did request input from them on the preliminary. They haven't generated a report yet for their specifics, but the high level, they basically said everything is status quo and there's nothing more that they really. There's no alarms or well bells or whistles going off right now. Yeah. But they do have. Uh, I'll send it out to everybody. There's a bunch of pictures that they take to monitor degradation. They do it last periodically so you can monitor by looking at the pictures from before and until before and after since we know we have a problem with that one discharge line uh is there a schedule or how often are they going to examine this to see if it's getting worse they do the, they do at the same time every year every year once yeah which is going to think it's in the september october time frame and it's not done by dpw it's actually done by a vendor that we hire but the last time it was inspected, they, there's no need to move forward with any repairs at this time. I have a quick question also about that. The bent valve linkage, that's not an issue? I have to ask him that's a good point. I have to follow up with that. I'll mm -hmm. take an action, Larry, to follow up with DPW. Mm -hmm. the, that's done. Flag is down. The flag is finally down. Not there was much flag left. The flag that... Yeah. But the... Uh, yeah, the... On the 24-inch outlet valve uh, at the dam, back... Two years, not this past winter, but the winter before, there was some ice damage to the linkage uh, going from the hand wheel down to the valve mm -hmm. itself, which is slightly bent. I wanted them to look at it to verify the functionality is not impacting and still be operable if we ever need it. We have a time frame for that. Uh, give me two weeks. It takes me about two minutes to get the question out, but it might take two weeks to get the answer. Gotcha. Okay, next is an exciting topic for all the residents, the beach update. Erica, do you got that? Um, I have um, the paperwork to submit for Department of Health to re-permit our beach this year. Um, we hope to open end of June. Uh, we have several, uh, we did an outreach event with the Washingtonville swim team uh, back in the fall. So we do have some interested individuals from there we have two lifeguards who are applying to you need to mute somebody there i did sorry um okay. so we have two lifeguards who are interested in coming back at least two from last year and we have two good. more on deck so we're in good shape but all of them are high school students and they are currently recertifying their cpr and aed which Perfect. has to be done annually um so if you know anyone who's interested we need them to have a waterfront certification and we need to have them to have um, a CPR AED for the professional rescuer training that's um, current this year. So you can have them email bdlboard at gmail.com and we will look through their information. Thank you. That, and that has to be completed before we could accept their applications. Is that correct? Yeah, I can't forward anything to the DPW unless um, they have sent me uh, both of those certifications, a copy of their driver's license or permit, and then the application that was sent out in the email uh, about a month ago. Okay. And our target for the ideal 4.0 level of uh, lifeguards, what is that? Five? Five. Four lifeguards and one supervising lifeguard. Four plus one soup. Okay. And right now we got uh, one soup, potential soup, and one uh, other. Yes. Okay. Okay, very good. Now, last year we opened up on June 27th, and I heard you say the target will be for the end of June, so that's aligned with what we did in the past. Okay, any questions on the beach at all? No one's going twice. Okay, lake health treatments. I'll take this. The contract is in place again for this year with uh, Pond and Lake Connection. Our primary point of contact is a gentleman by the name of James Gorman. He's been extremely helpful, extremely instrumental, extremely great with turnarounds, pretty much with everything and anything. Uh, we asked him to come out and do a preliminary site visit, uh, which they did back on April 5th, just to see what was going on. And at that time, he identified the filamentous algae has grown up from the bottom, which is common, milfoil that looked like it was just getting started at that time. And he only saw fragments of the curly uh, leaf pond, pondweed, which seems to grow, uh, which likes to grow in the colder water. So that was good. The DEC permits, they were all approved for all of our applications. That was approved on May 1st. Um, Pond and Lake Connection applied the first, they were actually, uh, this is the chronology, everything played out. 
Quantum Lake Connection, James Gorman with his team came out on May 11th with their airport, did the first chemical application with a chemical called Nautique. The uh, notice was sent out via the uh, BDL email to all the residents. So that will be tomorrow, correct? I'm sorry, you're right. Jumping ahead of yes, myself, suddenly. Yes, so I'm, sure I'm going to be out of town tomorrow. So. <laughs> So tomorrow we can expect the airboat to come around. Will yeah. they be spot treating any specific areas or will it just be an overall blanket? It, well, they don't know until it actually comes. A lot of it's sight on. Yeah. Like, see, see, a lot of, yeah. a lot of it, there's a survey. that really He comes out and he hits what he has to hit. Right. But the communication went out on May 8th. Is that correct, Erica? Yes. I got that right? I'm just going to lay back out of line with my dates right now. I got to go to Pennsylvania early tomorrow morning. I'm already there apparently in my mind. Okay. And some preliminary feedback we got from James Gorman based on input from them. The number of treatments we're anticipating to do, we'll start to, we'll see a decrease going in 2025 due to helping uh, the, they anticipate the internal loading from the decaying vegetation. That's going to start driving down our need for as many treatments as we're doing. But we won't know until we actually get there. Um, the budget, I went over the budget. The budget's already lined up in place. And I went over that with Fonda Lake Connection, which uh, makes sure we're all aligned so we have the adequate money to cover what we need to cover. I'm not going to go through the dollars on that. Uh, another topic a lot of people like to hear about is the DEC grant. Uh, Fred, I'm going to let you run with that. Well, we've been having some success with that. Um, I've been in touch with uh, the person at the DEC, uh, namely uh, Vicki Wagenbach, uh, who handles uh, our, our specific permit and areas of that type, as well as uh, Mary. Uh, wait a minute. Mary, Mary at the DPW, you think? Yeah, yeah. Mary. Um, I just, my brain just went. Through. Hi, from it. Hmm? Be late for a last day. Hi, from yeah. it. Hi, from it. Oh, um, and information has been sent to both indicating what has been expended uh, since 2017. Uh, and we were fortunate that uh, one treatment that occurred prior to the grant was not paid until after the grant came into effect uh, for various reasons. So the general feeling is that will be included in the grant reimbursement. And that was based on your discussions with, with, with Vicky, Vicky up in DEC? Vicky at the DEC. Okay. Because um, she says it's based on payment, not when it's done. Okay. And a question came up earlier um, regarding their need for 30-day notice of any kind of request for uh, payment. And she says, that's basically for larger projects that are having step by step by step. But that was not an issue with us. In fact, she asked me to write up a general summary of where we stand to date with applications, permits, and things that have been done since the inception of the grant. So I sent that to her about uh, <clears throat> two and a half weeks ago. Everything seemed to be fine on that. In fact, today, I sent to... Uh, to Mary, copy Vicky, uh, Mary again with the DPW, uh, copy Vicky of all of the treatments and payments that are regarding herbicide that has occurred since 2017, both for solitude lake management and pond and lake. In addition, I've asked Mary to supply a cost that we pay or the fee that we've paid to Northeast uh, Aquatic research mm -hmm. when I, I kind of aimed it at a way that they came here to explore the aquatic species that were around the area uh, as well as other things too but I said that's what they were aimed at so I've asked Mary to supply a, a, a fee on that that they the county paid to them and that will be included in fact today right after I sent the email Vicky got back to Mary with a description of what she needs to do yep, so. to send uh, the information uh, to the DEC, notarized statements with this uh, grant uh, uh, program that they mm -hmm. have. 
that was used during the inception of, of this grant. So things are moving along on this thing. Excellent. I appreciate the effort you're putting into it to bring it on. Chris, can I just bring up this? And I know we brought this up in our own little talks about it. There was a 2018 pre-dam filling report. And I believe the answer at the time or the opinion was that it would not be submittable. So there was a report about what we would expect when the lake is back and what is, is, in, the, is in the lake. If, can that be looked at again? Well, again, because we paid for that was Northeast Aquatics to do. Is that all part of when, when Heather and AJ came out? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Who's that? Hillary, not Heather. Oh, I thought Erica was jumping in. Um, Hillary and uh, and AJ, yeah, at the time, right. yes, it was that report. But I was just curious because I, you know, it's something we didn't want to leave behind. That's questionable. I threw that in with my fingers crossed. So you did include it because it was a yeah. full analysis okay. of that's everything. That I wanted Mary to provide okay. uh, the cost that we paid to them. Okay. The okay, very good. So just uh just try to capture it all and summarize it a little bit then. Yeah. So it was a it was a hundred thousand dollar grant right. that was awarded to us back in 2017. Uh was not utilized at all right. there during that time. We submitted no expenditures up until this point right now. Uh nothing was submitted for no we didn't submit anything didn't to submit. the DC for any reimbursement. No, we have not yet. This is okay. the first time we've gone. So because the lake was drained, we had COVID, we have and we had to do two renewals now on the expiration date. So right now, the grant, the way it works, we get a 52% return on every dollar it's actually spent on dealing with invasive species. Um, we, the county supported us very strongly in turning that extension around, so we deeply appreciate all their help to do that, which is now extended. It's a short timeline now again. We only got to July of 2024 again. So it's extended to that point. So theoretically, we can put in applications fees for this year and part yeah. of 2024 if we go with a similar existing schedule. Right. So back in, the, in 2017 and 2018, there was 21,752 spent with solitude under previous administration. That was not submitted. But we're due to your discussion with DEC, they will accept that because the payment was actually made after the right. grant went into effect. Well, let's put it this way. At this point, right. until the legal legals get involved over there, I'm not guaranteeing anything. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Uh, 2018, we had no related expenses. Right. And 2019 to through February 2021, the lake was drained. Yes. Uh, we were considering that in a Northeast Aquatics report looking at the invasive species. Right. That was in 2020. Right. So that was in that snapshot, if you will. May 2020. Correct. And then in 2022, we had 17,900 spent upon the lake connection specifically for uh, the herbicide treatments. Two herbicide treatments and also a $400 permit fee. Excellent. Okay. What's a, that 17,900? Does that include the uh, permit fee? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's on top of that. And now in 2023, we're expecting about the same, roughly, say, $18,000. And then we have up until July of 2024 to, to get our final credits, and if you will. Correct. So it'll be another potentially some another 18,000. So with all that being said, we're looking at the maximum right now that we have on the table is about $75,000. So out of that $100,000 grant, we expect to get back somewhere around 39,000 if everything goes through. Right, if everything goes well. And basically on discussion with DPW, the way it works, it don't come back into our budget. It does, but it goes into it the sur surplus. In fact, Mary wasn't sure. She said, I'll get back in. Right. So that'd be the cash flow for that then. Okay, but you did a lot of work, friend. I deeply appreciate everything you did. Thank you. Any questions Absolutely about correct. any questions about the grant from the board? No, it seems pretty clear. As long as we understand, it's the invasive species. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and the other things too, we um, got to be careful. Like we, we leave, kind of feel like we're leaving money on the table, but we don't want to go buy cat food at half price when you don't have cat. So it's not to spend money for the sake of spending it to try to capture well, the grant. You're going to do that. I've got a cat. <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn it over to Chris now to talk about lake testing for the uh, internal and also the watershed. Sure, I need to just give a little spin here because I don't want to. Everybody needs to hear, need to kind of see the face for this one. Um, so trying to land the airplane that has been in the air for lake management um has has been some work. And the plane is finally on approach, we would say, but it's still certainly in process. What I'm speaking of is we're trying to go for a three-year contract. 
Um, it's still being delayed, you know, in the DPW process for, um, you know, finding a vendor. Um, it was first introduced by the board in 2022 um, with the desire to mitigate, eradicate where possible all sources of nutrients that create algal blooms. Um, the recent 2022 CSLAP report continues to find that we are eutrophic, um, which means high levels of organic co uh, compounds, nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen found in solution. Um, if you've been with us for the last, you know, at least while I've been around, these things are mentioned almost at every meeting. So once again, if you want further background, please go back and check um, the YouTube videos, but I'll try to give a quick history um, <clears throat> right now. So in years, there's been evidence, and it's before recent years, but certainly recent years, uh, surface that suggests that the lake itself may be, re may be receiving high levels of uh, nutrients um, from outer sources. Um, therefore, all tributaries will be targeted where possible, especially um, surrounding land development, as sur surrounding land development continues. Um, our goal is to diminish the future reliance on treatment chemicals, so algicides, herbicides, and the benefits would be uh, taxpayers, residents, uh, district residents would save money on the treatments because, you know, we wouldn't need them as much, hopefully. Um, as a reminder, we had uh, voted to approve $30,000 for this and um, plans for, the, so to narrow it down, when this all goes through, there are five things, five categories that we are trying to take action on. Um, the, first is a, the first is a bathymetric survey. The last one was done in 2013. The lake has um, inarguably changed, uh, sitting fallow for two years, uh, water running through, Beaver Brook running through, snows, rains has changed the uh, topography a little bit, and that matters. Um, having that done properly will actually target treatments more accurately in the future. So that treatment we're getting tomorrow, something like this could actually um, help that be more effective because uh, certain parts of the lake may need it where other lake parts of the lake may not need it as much. Um, so that's number one question. No, no good. Um, fishery survey, exactly what it says. Um, studying, we've been stocking the, uh, the lake with fish. Um, we kind of just see where, where we are, where we are, what's alive, how big they're getting. Um, I just on a side note found a 16, I actually was raking my lake and I pulled out alive a 16 inch, close to two pound bass okay. that I promptly put back in That's and fun. said, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> next is uh, the aquatic plant survey of the entire lake. Uh, you know, and these type of things have been done before. So if anybody's thinks saying, oh, we've been doing this, Sea Slap does this. This is of a different scale. This is of, this is, and the idea is for a three-year contract with a one-year extension, at least. Uh, if we could do more, we would love to, with a trusted source, with the idea to track, and not just track in small amounts, but grand amounts in the lake to truly see how it's changing, if it's changing, where it's changing. And if you would dial back to some things that I had been discussing with uh, conversation with DEC and uh, Senator Scoofus's office that trying to get local governments to respond to our potential concerns that, for instance, at the time, we're still speaking about Little Britain School, which I'll talk about in, in a moment. Um, we also have Brittany Terrace. They both, that has the current speedies permit. Um, Little Britain does not, they may not need it, but just to um, hold them accountable. And because at the moment, asking local government to help they're going to say where's the data where's the data it's only we're just, it's just we're, hmm. we're we're getting evidence but what's the evidence they want the evidence mm -hmm. um lastly in lake and tributary testing of course sampling of the phosphorus the nitrogen the nitrate the e coli um and then there's a whole list of other services that would be included to facilitate testing program implementation maintenance and follow-up actions to implement improvement. Wally did a great job of knocking this down. I probably had another two pages here. Thank you. <laughs> you right. did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So I that, hold on that or? No, that's continue. good. You're going to roll right into the next. But okay. that, uh, yep. So we were talking about the watershed and the impacts on the lakes. We're trying to control the nutrient loading internally and externally. Yes. So the what we're looking at doing is hiring this uh, company. Uh, and, 
a seasoned expert basically that takes the burden off of us to try to go out there and try to do the testing. Um, our goal is to get this in started this year. Yeah, we're, okay. we're, we wanted to get it done yesterday, but it's still okay. Like we said, the, plan, the airplanes in the air. The RFP is with the DPW, right? Correct. Now. Okay. Yes. Do you need any help from us at all? Um, more maybe just questioning DPW, making sure they have a lot on their plate. Of course, we were asking other things of them, but okay. to keep moving it along, phone calls have been made, emails have been sent. So I'll, um, I'll, it's more of that. I'll take an action and follow up with Eric Denega and Travis. Question, Chris. Um, you mentioned that uh, the testing agency or the evaluating agency would be also doing uh, for biological mm -hmm. uh, E. coli. Mm -hmm. So, is this something that's definitely going to be included in the program? That's where we're, we are requesting, and we have certainly done our research prior to this to see what we would need. Because I think a lot of us realize that's a necessity. Yeah. Uh, because there's been absolutely no testing whatsoever right. as far as what's coming into the lake. We've all assumed okay. the flows that we're getting. But at Nifola, at the session I was at, I was that they mentioned that a lot of times communities don't do that because of the expense incredible right yeah. and and if you think about the climate of what we are what we've been discussing the last six months to a year or more of cornwall social and the potential of having a restaurant grade effluent coming in um you can see how this really matters yeah. certainly yeah because yeah, uh one mill the uh <laughs> People that are responsible for like wastewater treatment systems that are they're going to be like the owners of properties, they rely on other people for their input, and they may or may not be intelligent enough to be able to translate. What does that mean? It's like they were saying that their levels are going to be extremely low, one milligram per liter of phosphorus. Okay, what is I asked her, what does that mean to you? It really wasn't a clear answer. I said, well, it translates into about 8,000 pounds of algae in our lake per year. So it is yeah. significant. Into a lake that already has problems. That's correct. correct. And it happens to be on a DEC list yeah. for yeah. impairment right. of phosphorus in general. So yeah. that's something that has been, of course, in everybody's brain. It'd be a tipping point. Yeah. Tipping point. Yeah. Okay, good, Larry. Subject to E. coli testing, I want to say around 2016, the exact date escaped me, we had a major uh, sewage discharge into the lake. And uh, we shut, we had to shut the beach down for several days uh, based on input from the Department of Health. And they actually came out and did some sampling, and they do have the capacity to do E. coli testing at the Orange County mm -hmm. Health right. Department. Now, you'll find in the beach regulations, if you're setting up a beach, you have to test the waters, including E. coli testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, many public beaches, uh, in lakes do this on an annual basis and sometimes several times during the year. So mm -hmm. it can be done locally. And maybe you want to get back with the Department of Health and see if they will mm -hmm. either do it or recommend a, uh, a service that will do it. But I think it's good point. probably mm -hmm. important to do this before you open the beach again. I appreciate it's good insight. And I, I mean, just successful in certain aspects of this back in the day but uh you know the depending upon uh who is in what agency at the time you got different results as yeah. far as cooperation was concerned you know you yeah. might want to go that yeah. in. that's a good recommendation we'll take that as a follow-up action uh that was larry rosini speaking he was a previous board chair he had a lot of experience in managing this lake for us uh, he shared with us an insight relative to the E. coli testing, so we're going to follow up with that. Chris, yeah. can you take that action? Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a town of Cornwall to do it one uh, where we had a sewage overflow in the middle Orange yeah. County Health Department would be the best to start with. Um, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay, let's keep moving. we got a tight schedule. 7-12. All right, so uh, just jumping into now the sewer municipality updates. Um, so we had mentioned Sorry. Little Britain School. Um, there is currently a communication out. I was hoping to get a re response back. It actually went out to uh, George Meyer. He was CC'd, but it was actually sent to um, John Agito, we mentioned before, the uh, super of the uh, sanitary sewer system of New Windsor. 
um, and, and Supervisor Myers um, with request to know exactly how Little Britain School is not required to have a speedies permit. They may not be able to answer this. Now, the possible answer right off the bat would be that their affluent is lower than a thousand gallons per day. And from the crowd here, it's more than a thousand. And and I and that's where we are. We're 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 kind of like already thinking that, but until it's like we know, we don't know. So and that's and that's kind of there's because there's a threshold of a thousand thousand gallons a day. And you would you would need a speedies permit. It is clear they do not have a speedies. They haven't had it since is the date still on here. Um while you edited my data, wait, no, it's um, it's it's I'm kidding. It's like October. I think it was like October of twenty one was the last time that their speedies permit was in effect, and they actually changed the system. Um, and it, the, not a lot of details of what is there has been given, and the only thing that was spoken to me by Paul Neenstad of Washingtonville School Central School District, may, um, uh, supervisor and uh, assistant superintendent of um operations was that we clean the tanks out every six months so it sounds like a septic system but does that have a leach field if it has a leach field then what's coming out of it you know and that and these are that's this is like trying to get these answers so who, who do you this john Aguido, is that the primary person you interface with yes but yes and he's quite knowledgeable of the system mm -hmm. um but he also answers to town council Supervisor, who, who does he work for? New Windsor, a town in New Windsor. It's okay. the it, it, and and Larry would know this. It's a, they were originally a private company. He works for Say it again. He works for Chamber of Control. They have a plan, plan So they're contracted as yeah. back in the eighties. New Windsor uh, privatized the operation of the sewage treatment. There you go. Uh, using Chamber of Pollution Control out of the Poughkeepsie or Hyde Park. Um, they specialize in those systems, and you know, have been there for ever. I mean, mm -hmm. okay. uh, town of so, Cornwall four or five years ago also privatized, so he actually operates both systems, okay. and, and yet he is very knowledgeable. Okay, so you're in a phase. Isn't also uh, George Myers too? It, it, yes, and from other things, we have a bit of a connection. So uh, I was hoping in hopes that he would pick up on this. Um, well, he's got so. absolutely nothing to do with Bloomberg School. Yeah, true. <laughs> but it's a New Windsor property. And whenever I've talked to the DEC and I talk to the senator's office, they bounce it immediately back to the town of New Windsor. Well, you know, if, you, if I may, if you, you know, I've got a long history with this whole situation yeah. with Little Britain. Yeah. Okay. And, and not to cut you short, Larry. If you don't mind, I would like to. I'd like to appreciate your knowledge. I'd like to do is table this as an off discussion after the meeting. That, that's fine. I just okay. want to mention that before you know, just a point of information now. Before we start looking at New Windsor providing services to the okay. town of Cornwall, we really should be providing services to places like Little Britain School, mm. Brittany Center, yep. absolutely, uh, a whole bunch of others, right? To yep. reserve capacity there. Yep. That's maybe since they have directly affect the lake. Yeah, we're definitely going to be pulling the president pretty heavily now. And yeah. The, the average quantity is just at uh, Little Britain is 1,100, uh, it's 1,550 gallons a day yeah. over a three year period. So, okay. So, it's well above the what goes in comes out, you know, 1,000 gallons. It's, it, okay, for now. Yep, that's good. So, if you don't mind, uh, Keep following up the way you're doing because we're yeah. pulling threads trying to find out what's coming into the lake. Uh, we got a trailer park, like Larry mentioned. We also got the Little Britain School. Our ultimate goal is to try to get better controls on them so we're not discharging anything into the lake. Yeah. But we got to pull the threads. Yep. Yeah. And those are the two known discharges. Okay. And so we have to start somewhere. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, fish restocking. I'll keep this kind of brief. Um, last year, we were supposed to, to put the perch in. <laughs> yellow perch in at the end of the year, which we were budgeted for, but unfortunately the hatchery hicklings, uh, when they went into a pond to pull the fish out, they realized that they didn't have any in their pond. So we weren't able to do it. It's, you can only stock yellow perch in the fall. Uh, we do have a $6,000 budget for 2023. Uh, DPW has processed a one-year extension on that contract for the fish stocking. So that's in place, it will be in process to be put in place for this fall. And we're working with hicklings. I did talk to them. They're not, they hope to be able to help us, but they can't guarantee us what they're gonna have. They actually said that there is a massive, massive shortage of minnows, for example. There's no minnows to be found anywhere in the country right now. That's still the case now. Yeah, right now. I mean, this right now, right now. I talked to him yesterday. 
There are no minnows anywhere. So as far as minnows, no, we're hoping for the yellow perch you might be able to help us with. Okay, moving on to reserves and community properties. Uh, Kevin? All right, so uh, the buoys were installed with volunteer help. Uh, we took three out over the winter and left one in to see if it survived to the ice, but it really never froze, so that kind of experiment failed. So we're probably going to do that again this year. Uh, the contract slaves were found and removed. Uh, boat launch. Uh, a lot more boat traffic these days. A lot more people are bringing their boats in and out, so the gravel's not cutting it. We have some issues with that. So we plan on putting a concrete pad in sometime this summer. Uh, anyone who has concrete experience and wants to uh, volunteer, we're more than happy to take you on. So just give us, give us contact with us. Uh, we do have to use a, a county vendor for the concrete, right? So yep. how long is that going to take? Uh, we have to interface with the county on that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if, it, if we do like a 25 foot by 10 foot, that's about three yards of concrete. Right. right. We have plenty of ground. Do we have an approximate price on that? Okay, that's fine. Probably about two yards of concrete. Okay, I understand. Okay, good, thank you. We'll try to get it done as soon as we can. Uh, like I said, we're volunteers. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, the I'll talk about the landscape company. The uh, there's a new landscape company taking care of specifically Beaver Dam Lake properties this year. Beaver Dam Lake properties this year. Uh, the name of the company is Magnano. I can't say it. Landscaping. Uh, the owner is Andrew. I met with him this week. He's extremely helpful, extremely pleasant to work with. He's awesome. Uh, he did come out and cut the properties. He did a great job already. Uh, again, moving. We're next week. Tom Lark and I are actually going to do a walk down with them on all the reserves, just to go over some specifics about doing work around the lake, what we want to see, what we don't want to see, and lessons learned relative to uh, safety of uh, people doing work on the properties. So we will accomplish that next week. Uh, we just make sure that we, um, when you do the walkthrough, that we hit reserve number six with them so that the um, leaves are not being blown into oh, that stream. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, yep. Just piled yep. up. We already talked about that, oh, actually. All right. Yep. We don't want any landscape putting anything into the lake. That's not going to happen. The fact that you're making this guy that blew the leaves into the stream. Okay. I heard, I, we won't get into here. I heard different. <laughs> and when they cut the grass, they yep. shoot it into the lake. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't want to put anything into the lake, period. We'll, we'll take care of that, though. There's a lot of lessons learned we want to go over. Uh, the reserves, again, part of what we're trying to do is make Beaver Dam Lake a pleasant place to live, make it a safe place to live, but also try to clean up some nuisances that are around. Uh, the On reserve uh, three, and also down in reserve two, and also what's the other reserve, five? Uh, yeah, we're in five. Reserve with, but boats have been stored there for forever the way it looks there's trees growing out and there are holes in the boats are not definitely not uh seaworthy sea seaworthy at all and i'm out to so the board has already uh, taken a lot of time going out there identifying how many boats there are see how many decals there are we had talked to the dpw about what we're going to do with them to make sure we don't have any liabilities we have a process worked out for doing that that all being said the next step is building racks for the other boats we do have some lumber sitting out here which we're going to be using and that's part of the plan for that uh, who had the contact with the contractor? Uh, the, the volunteer that said that they were going to help. Yeah. Uh, um, so a local resident at the time, at the time, just wants to kind of be a volunteer and remain, remain nameless. But um, at some point, there should be a prototype, and this is kind of like a initiative that's in its infancy. <laughs> It's in, uh, in its infancy with the idea of uh, a new boat storage policy potentially, not this year. So prior practice will continue. Um, but just know that the board is kind of investigating the idea of changing where boats are stored, how boats are stored, what kind of boats are stored with other boats. So it makes sense, for instance, to have all the canoes in a certain style rack that takes up a certain amount of space and not having, let's say, paddle boats um, just laying there with water in them for two years full of minnows um and 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 leaves uh taking up space that say three canoes could be in so that's all going to get looked at um so we're going to come up with a policy we'll talk about it that'll be that'll be a, a new topic of discussion but there's a resident who has 20 years of experience building for uh new york state parks uh down at harriman state park like sebago 
um, and, and a few other places that I'll bring up in the future when I speak to him again. Um, but he's already shown the board some uh, photos of what he's built, and uh, they're quite nice. Okay. And uh, it, I think it would be a welcome change and also a way to use some wood that we have on hand just to make a demo rack. So yes. expect to see that in the future. Who is the primary interface with that gentleman? Is that you, Chris? That's me. Okay. Yeah. Did he give me a timeline of when he might be able to start helping do that? Uh, it was more like as soon as possible. Okay. It was Good. quite soon. Okay. Yeah. Can you just take an action to get some dates? Yeah, might absolutely. Sure. Okay. Certainly. Yeah. Got that, Larry? Thank you. Okay. And you want to talk briefly about boat, boat permits and cleanup efforts? <laughs> you okay? You know, water? Um, so um, while I'm not the lead when it comes to our uh, permitting uh, for boats and cars, please, uh, Fred has done a great job for many years um, and, and working through this process to get your boats registered and you know, obviously vehicles for uh, parking on reserves. Um, to that end, uh, we, we really don't want this to be a permanent storage for your junk boats. If you don't live here anymore, obviously, you know, those things are going to be abandoned and we're never going to figure out who owns what. And it's just going to be a junk pile. So we've gone around, we've cleaned things up, we've moved a few things around. Um, and we want to continue to improve the property for aesthetic purposes and also for better use. And uh, to Chris's point, so there's somebody who's willing to help us with that. We've already put in some physical effort on our behalf. Please, I know we, uh, we talk about this every call. If you own a boat, calm down, check on it, and get it registered with us. All right. Um, they, they, I don't want to beat that. There's no need to get any further into that. So um, that's really all I can add for that. But thank you, Fred, for your year's worth of diligence with that. And uh, again, I'll continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. And. Uh... If I'm allowed to, I just had a, a little bird speak to me. Is it possible for the board, again, I'm not a legalistic type of person, to set up a regulation that if the boat does not have a permit tag, it does not belong there and it will be removed? Right now, the regulation is local law, 8 1991 which we can, we're going to revise that. There's a lot of things we're going to put in. There's a lot of stuff we're going to take out. So right, Because so this, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm about the other board members, that anything that's not tagged yep. is is illegal. Take it all. There goes the boogeyman. <laughs> take it all. There's a section that mentions that it does. probably that's not there. It's, it would be considered abandoned. Yes. Correct. It's already in there. Yeah. yeah, it's not even to say to the boats, yep. but just in general. Property. Can we make that somehow official or we have to wait for other approval? Well, it is official already. The thing I guess that needs to be done is communicated it. You know, we're communicating here. You've got a couple of people online. There's a lot of people out there at 800. These guys are doing tremendous amount of work so on themselves. What we need to do is, have we, Erica might know the answer. So we send out any recent communications through the email to all the residents about the uh, storage of boats. Yeah, I believe so. And also in the uh, signature of every email that's gone out for the last year is the link to the permit information. So I've also put it in the chat box here. Um, yeah. And then you can also find it just in the signature of the email that you um, click the link for this meeting. Okay. One of the things I probably want to do that too, let me, this is actually probably a really good time to talk about this briefly, is we need to get, every, uh, if you're going to, the, the reserve, the lake, the properties are reserved for Beaver Dam Lake residents. You pay a tax to be able to use, say, this ever made in. Uh, if you're allowed to have guests, but they have to be escorted guests, in addition to that, they, the boats that are being used on the lake have to be stickered as a resident's boat. So be careful of allowing people to come into the lake saying that they're your friend and uh, start using the facilities. We don't want to go there with that. Uh, we need to get tighter controls. The way we do that is with the stickers right now. We want every boat out there to have a current sticker on that. So if you could, let's take another action, I guess, to send out another email update that all boats need to have the stickers on. We'll do a, a regular update about getting, make sure your cars and your boats have the stickers. If I can add one more thing to that, uh -huh. about the is I had one permit that was issued and the person said to me, well, I have my relatives come over and they bring their boats here. Can they use it on the lake? I said, absolutely not. Because right. I don't know what's on that boat when it comes in the lake. Yeah, exactly. 
Yep. Mm. Yeah, Jason had put together a, a real quick post about uh, you know alien species being brought in on the boats, you know, invasive yep. things. Yep. And so he, he just, we send that out. Trawler motor. It, it could still have water and yeah. small little particles yeah. in it, so like no foil, okay. spread by being fragmentary. Okay. Just chop it up. And there's a little piece in there to start establishing colony. What was that sent on the email? I mean, the Facebook page. Yes. Okay. Was on Facebook was from the DC. Okay. If we could, though, so in this email, we're going to put together, including in there, since that's our official communication. Yeah. We'll get that out to everybody again. Yeah, I can forward. I have the DC email. Okay. I can forward it. Okay. So, Very good. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Briefly, I'll want me to cover the sea slap for you. Why not? Okay, because not really much that we haven't started doing testing yet. The qualified volunteers this year is going to be Fred, Molly, Jason, and Captain Kevin. Is that correct? Captain Kevin, right. And hopefully, and another maybe another Chris couple weeks, yeah, another four weeks in the event. And Chris is in the pipeline right now. I think Chris done. Okay. Do you have a date on when you're going to be able to complete your training? I say June first. June. That's the Bruce room. Okay. Yeah. This is open. I'm there. Uh, the 2022 results are all reviewed and provided to Pond Lake Connection. We're also going to give that to our new lake management company when we get it. And the 2023 testing program is planned to start. How many tests are we going to do? Eight. We're going to do eight throughout the year. Beginning, the beginning of June. That's my question. So June through early September. June through September. We're going to do eight, eight through September, but basically through eight, August. Okay. And maybe one in August, September. Okay. Very good. Thanks. That's it for the C slot. Uh, Cornwall Social Club. We didn't have a meeting last month. And again, I'm running out of time here on everybody. It's 729 now. Uh, the last time we uh, had a meeting was back in February. And we, uh, no, March, I'm sorry. And went through uh, what was going on with Cornwall Social. There's a lot of passion that exists with the 800 some odd households here in Beaver Dam Lake. And our primary focus we need to keep focused on as a board isn't about our personal preferences. It's about what's good for the lake. So anything that we're doing as a board is gonna be focused on what's right for the lake. Uh, the uh, the, we did receive an update from the owners on April 21st which I'll read, but it's also pretty much exactly what they discussed at the Town of Cornwall Planning Board held on May 1st. I'll just go over it really quick. Uh, they did significant changes from their original plan. Uh, the, they're gonna do a phased approval process so they can get things moving. They are private owners. They expressed the fact that if they wait too long, they're just losing money by letting it sit there. And if they have to sell, they actually said that at the uh, Town of Cornwall Planning Board that they will sell the property. And then if they do that, then you have to be careful on who gets sold to next because you don't know where it could be a lot worse than what's going in there. The wastewater, that was our huge issue that we were primarily focused on. The owners have completely abandoned the plans for any wastewater treatment plant on the property. They are not going to do that. They heard our concerns and they uh, will not be going that direction. Uh, their plan right now is to be able to tie into the municipal service when it is available, and they will see connection and pursue the, uh, that when the ex expanded operations are available. In the meantime, in the interim, they're going to have temporary storage using a tank that's probably going to get pumped out quite frequently. They're going to have two tanks on the, on the property. I had a discussion um, with Colin Schmidt already about this to get his perspective. We actually have Steve Bedetti here also. They're going to be running for the town of New Windsor. Uh, do you have any insights that you'd like to share at all, Steve? Not to put you on the spot, but uh, yeah, I listen. I you know I said yeah. our concern is for the new ones are you know the, the lake here. Uh huh. The sewer. Um, I think everybody knows that we're in the middle of a fifty some million dollar expansion of our sewer plant, which is at capacity. Yep. Uh, that time's over capacity. We've had a number of uh -huh. you know violations from that. Yeah. Yep. Um, certainly not against at some point seeing it. Look it up. Okay. The town has an agreement with Cornwall with um, good capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as part of the agreements is that we can't be damaged. Yeah. Right here, we can't hook up, which we can right now. We can't because we're at our own. You're at a capacity right now. We have other, yeah. you know, previous um, development yep. building in, in the pipeline too that was prior to my, my administration sure. that we have to plan on hooking up as well. So we're in the middle of going from a five million to Okay, that's the part I was looking for. So, okay. And that, you know, it's for a couple years out with that. Okay. You know, as soon as we can, 
Okay. So it's not that far out of the question where they, they might be able to in the future someday be able to tie into town of Windsor. These projects that are yep. that's, you know, underway as, as, you know, as we speak. Okay. Um, and, you know, as soon as you know, we're in that, you know, out of that, um, getting that notice violations and stuff like that, and we're out of that window, we yep. really can do whatever we can do to help. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, for those who can't couldn't see or couldn't hear, that was Steve Baditti. Uh, you, you currently are part of the planning board, Steve? I'm a town council. You're a town council member for the town of New Windsor. He just shared some insights. He is also running uh, for town supervisor this year. Yeah, Steve has been incredibly supportive of everything here at Beaver Dam Lake. So I deeply appreciate everything, Steve. And thank you for everything. Uh, the other thing they talked about was traffic. I'll give you the bullets that they gave me. They completed a uh, limited scope traffic study with Creighton Manning. They're going to propose an access from Shore Drive during the current project phase one. They will seek access via 94 and seek an amendment to their site plan as soon as they get access. Uh, they will not wait for the sewer access to move forward with 94 access. And once they have 94 access, the shore drive access to the property will be maintained for deliveries and emergency services only. So that's that part. Okay, now try, still trying to keep us on time here, best I can. The uh, community events. Um, I'll, just to save time, I'm going to touch on the ones we complete, and I'll let somebody else talk about the ones going forward. Uh, the Easter egg hunt on April 2nd was an extreme success. We have a lot of kids show up. A lot of eggs. Yep, and they're a still, eggs. I don't know where they're coming from, but kids are still finding buried eggs in the sand right now. <laughs> the Earth Day success, that was uh, also awesome. That was April 22nd. They had a teams of uh, the Girl Scouts. They cleaned up. Uh, which reserve was that, Erica? Two. Reserve two. Reserve two. And then we had another group go up to reserve eight. A group of Jason went to visit the base. Yep, yep. But you had a car full. <laughs> car full of you. But but the it's almost like a site pride day. We're cleaning things up, which is really, really awesome to see the community come together to do that. Uh, then they did have a vendor craft sale, which I understand was also a success on May 3rd. Now, future events. I'm going to let Jason talk about this. He's proposing to do a uh, rain garden construction symposium on May 17th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. I'm actually updating that to May 18th and 17th because there's a conflict with the book club just because a lot of people like to attend. Okay. Switching that to May 18th at 7 p.m. is to encourage or to demonstrate what a rain garden is and how you can implement it at home. And I give some examples of new species that you can put into the environment. What time is that, Jason? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Good. Thank you for that. Yeah, there's a Zoom yeah. link on Zoom. The Facebook on Zoom. Post. Okay. Yeah. How, you, are you, how are you advertising that? Just on Facebook or? I'm, I'm sending it out through the DDL. Let's send it out through the email. We can put it on the boards on the road, too. Sure. <laughs> Let's get it out because not everybody has access to the Facebook. And again, it's not our primary method of communication. Yep. So, okay. Not that that is directly board related. This is a volunteer thing you're doing. I appreciate it, but it will help the link. Uh, the art sale is currently planned for May 20th of 2023. It's a Saturday. Uh, yoga and Pilates classes, they started back up on Sundays. Other updates. This is going to be Larry's stuff here. The yard waste, the goose control, and turtle pressing. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me just real briefly run through a couple of things that were um, quickly glanced through. I know for time purposes, we're trying to bolt through stuff. But um, on the Cornwall Social, just to let you know that uh, the planning board has denied a request for a second public hearing. Okay. Um, I did do a bunch of notes and sent them out. Uh, to the board just to review what had happened. And I think that's a pretty relevant thing. So there will not be a second uh, public open public hearing for that. Um, so I just wanted to add that. Um, as far as the events go, again, Wally covered at a real high level. Uh, we didn't have a vendor craft sale, but we had a craft event. So we didn't sell anything. Six people came, set up nice tables here, showed what they can do. 
trust me, we're going to do this again and we're going to build on this. Uh, it was very basic. We had about a dozen total people come and we're going to build on this for people who are willing to either teach a class real quick. If you have a skill or a talent you want to show, we're going to open up the building. We're going to do this on a regular basis. Maybe I'll even do something and everybody can come here and learn how to make a great chili. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So uh, as we mentioned, there is a book club that's happening uh, organized by uh, Leah, and that will be on the 17th. Uh, the book club, obviously, you have to read the book. So, you know, you can't just show up and have a discussion. Uh, but then um, Jason did change his date to 518 because it was a conflict in the schedule. Um, the yard sale, we do have uh, 48 families posted up for the yard sale through Chrissy Wilger, who has volunteered. Chrissy is a resident, and we really appreciate you spearheading this, Chrissy. Uh, again, there are people who will love this uh, event. Uh, I'm not happen to be a fan, but uh, a lot of people do like it. So have fun. Sell your stuff on your driveway. Okay. Uh, yard waste and burn bans. Okay. Burn ban is officially lifted on the 14th. Okay. That will be the end. May 14th. You can start to burn to your heart's content. Please be uh, fair to your neighbors and your residents. Do not burn things that should not be burned and do not burn stuff and blow it into your neighbor's uh, faces in their yards, etc. Common courtesy, please. Um, big thing with the yard waste, and I don't want to, uh, you know, overdo it, but um, the town of Cornwall changed their yard waste with uh, absolutely no notice. The yard waste procedures are something I've been keeping an eye on for two years. I use it heavily myself. They have gone away from allowing us to use buckets. They only want paper bags. I am still in the process of working with Town Secretary Beezer, but the um, highway superintendent sent me a um, rather um, unprofessional email, in my opinion, and um, I'm going to have to get back to uh, potentially maybe contacting the town supervisor to see if we can come up with a better alternative plan than to just immediately discontinue the use of uh, these pails, which are very important for lake health because it helps us all to prevent our leaves from going into the lake, all of our yard waste from blowing into the lake. So I'm trying to push that point forwards. Um, so I had a whole big thing, but we're not going to get into all of that. One second. So they expect the residents to purchase their own? Bags? Yes. And I told them. Point, I, wonder. I told them that I already pay a large amount of taxes for my sanitation, uh, which they quoted me an incorrect number, claiming that I don't pay so much. That was kind of like a slap to the face when I had my bill in front of my hand. Um, the secretary did apologize for those small errors and other errors that were in there. I told them that if they're going to discontinue the bucket use, they need to provide us with bags because we're already paying for this to begin with. So that is to be continued. I don't know where that will go. I'm going to give you an email. Um, I'm going to send it out in the email. I'm going to give you the sanitation department Um the superintendent of highways, I will give you his email and you can message him uh, directly if you have a challenge or if you have a concern regarding this yard waste, because to me, it's a real big deal. All right. Um, Cornwall. Cornwall. No, Cornwall. Nothing changed for New Windsor, but Cornwall. There is no burning. You can't burn it all. So like as far as... Like, we're, yeah, we're at the... Um, uh, well, our uh, population is only 20,000, which we are, and I, you can't burn through the building burning. They allow the little chimneys and the <coughs> right fire pits and stuff like that. Right. Okay. So no open burning is allowed. Yeah. Okay. In New Windsor, in New Windsor, Cornwall is different. All right. Well, all right. So if you're a Cornwall resident, burn away. If you're a New Windsor resident, sorry, you can't burn anything. Yep. Um, my apologies. Uh, USDA uh, goose control. Um, I have been in touch with uh, Travis from the USDA. This is an initiative uh, also through Stewart Airport for help for uh, air traffic control so that we won't have geese flying around into airplanes with huge accidents. Um, we did have a few treatments already done uh, on uh, goose eggs and um, it has been noted that there are significantly less nests this year than there were last year. We have seen a number of uh, baby geese around, which means obviously a couple of eggs mm -hmm. got away, right? So um, the USDA and Travis's team are headed back to Beaver Dam Lake, one more treatment, and then there will be a roundup of Canadian geese, which will happen at the end of June. 
Um, we have requested that they leave the uh, swans alone. And also, even though we don't really have a choice for them to select what they will and won't, they can't access somebody's property who won't allow them access. So mute swan nests, if it's on your property and you love them, you tell the USDA they can't go over there and there's nothing they can do about that. All right. Um, so let's see if there was anything. Turtle crossing, right? we haven't gone out and purchased any turtle crossing signs. We discussed this in my area where I live. I have turtles crossing the road all the time. Just as a brief discussion, please keep your eyes open. I mean, you're not going to see a big rock with legs walking across the road. It's a turtle. Stop. Help it to get, to get where it's going to the other side of the road. The direction it's going. Right. In the direction that it's going. Otherwise, you're going to do your work and he's going to go back and get run over. We love the turtles. We don't want to see them get killed. Um, that's just briefly what I have for you. So thank you for your attention as fast as I can. Back to the chair. <laughs> thank you, Larry. You're welcome. Hey, Larry. Eric, just continue on the turtle part of it, not to belabor it too much longer. Uh, how many did you see on the log up at Reserve One when you counted them that day? 15. 15 turtles. So the po yeah. turtle population is coming back pretty strong. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that. There's 12 gods and two ducks. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that wraps up our agenda. Let's go through board comments. Jason? Uh, are we still confirmed to roll off the reserves for the yard sale to deter trespassers? That's our plan. I'd like to do that. Yes. That's it. We well, have Tom set up to. We do not. It would be an action with Tom. Or you need somebody to put out homes. Yeah. What we're doing, our concern with. The yard sale typically draws a lot of ex people that don't live in Beaver Dam Lake into the area. And from our experience over the last year or two years, what happens is that people come into there and say, wow, what an awesome place. Let's go stay at the reserves. And I actually I think it was like seven or eight people I caught fishing that day and the next day that came into the area and they said, wow, what a great place to go fishing. So they right. came up and started fishing here. So what we want to do is rope off the reserves to prevent people from just going in during the day of the yard sale. So are we in agreement that it's just no vehicular traffic onto the reserve? Yeah. I mean, yeah. if somebody's going to walk no. in, yeah. we're not posting yeah. a guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's to discourage them. It's to discourage, yeah. They'll probably maybe still park on the street. Yeah. Another layer. Yeah. 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 So we want to ribbon off during the guard yeah. sale. Uh, no vehicle. Let me ask Fred up at reserve two. Have you seen a reduction in people coming into the area that don't have stickers on their car? Uh, somewhat. Uh, just this past week, I approached two kids uh, that were there, and uh, it's, it's always the same story. Oh, yeah, I'm a resident, but I haven't had a chance to get a sticker on it. Um, so to answer your question, yes, there has been a reduction, but I'm at a loss. Uh, well, what I'm glad to get over is it's a reduction, if not elimination of posting it's over. Uh, from last year, uh, but there's still a problem with either residents ignoring the request or trespassers. And maybe it's me, but I am embarrassed to call the Cornwall police when there's people down there because at least 60% of the time they leave before the police get it's not against, I mean, they got more important things to do than monitor our, our parking lot. Yeah, you could talk to Steve right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> but it's the only threat I have that say, hey, they're coming around and ticketing, so you better get tags on your, oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. You got to be careful as a board member to how you approach them. In fact, it's not going to discourage you from saying something to them, but uh, it really, if you see something, it's better off just call the police. The my experience, the guy even threatened to go home and get a gun one time. We, he couched it as I'm going to go home and get a gun so I can shoot the geese on the lake. <laughs> so that's I'm, it, it, Molly still thinks I'm crazy for the time I approached the guys that were stealing uh, a canoe and. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but that resulted in but people worked. being caught. And... Yeah, <laughs> she thought I was going to get shot. I said the insurance is good, but <laughs> it's but it's a case of I feel bad calling, and especially at night when they're parked down there under the light, parked at night, and I'll call and what's their reason why they parked there? Or it's, it's, it's yeah. the dispatch. There's a lot of times. It's, I think it's yeah. a county dispatcher sometimes, and I'll say okay, and, and by the time. 
a patrolman gets down there, mm -hmm. they're gone. Yeah. Now, yeah. I feel embarrassed that they're going to say, oh, it's from Tim again. Don't worry about it. That, you know, there's never somebody there when they come over. So I'm reluctant. Although Molly keeps bugging me, you call, you call, you call. Um, so I eventually call. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm reserved to URC and people still come in. And also, yeah. there are eight. I have actually heard from some residents that there's people coming in from out of town and spending, they're there till like midnight, just camping out, doing whatever yeah. they do at the time. We feel the same way, Fred, as you and Molly do. We have the problem that people want. It's the darkest spot maybe on the street. Yeah. Two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock, then two o'clock. You know, we feel we don't want to be uh, okay. an issue with the police departments. So, and the last time we said, uh, don't approach the individuals. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, but I'm going to do, I'm going to take an action. I'm going to talk to Steve. This is Steve. I'll take an action to meet with you, Steve, then just talk okay. about what we need to do to increase patrols on reserve eight and reserve two. I mean, there's only so much they can do. Yep. No, I, I got it. Yeah. Yep. So we'll do spot checks on it. Uh, Chris, anything else? Uh, no. I mean, outside of just, I can see reserve eight myself. I've made calls in the, you know, in the past. Okay. Uh, New Windsor has responded. And I think one time they chased off some children that were walking on the boats. Okay. You know, silly thing. Larry, anything else, Ted? I'm good. Thank you. Fred? I'm good. Kevin? Good. Okay. That was a test. Everybody who said he wants to move the time to seven o'clock going forward? Yes. I'm okay. I gave everybody a chance, but nobody brought it up. <laughs> move back to seven o'clock okay. for commuting purposes. So do we have a motion to change the start time to seven o'clock? Move. Have a second. Okay. Going forward, this meeting will start occurring at seven o'clock. Okay, open it up to resident comments. Anybody in the room have anything to add? I do, Wally. Um, yeah, and I'm going to come back to the computer shortly. I'm going to just go around the room really quick. Uh, Jim McGrail? Yeah, Jim McGrail. Short drop. Short drop. <laughs> uh, I, I heard somebody uh, brought it to my attention that um, a, a lifetime resident uh, that uh, they, they never went out to in, in the lake. And then they started treating with hmm? the copper solution. Huh? And the copper solution fills the weeds, but then with those weeds too, yeah. they fertilize and make the situation yeah. work. Yeah. 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 And it's gotten worse and worse from Europe here. Yeah, this be, that, that, there's that, another solution other than a copper solution. Yeah. Maybe we should try that. Yeah, I appreciate your discussion. And that, the guy, whoever it was, misled you a little yes. bit. Uh, Fred actually is incredibly knowledgeable. If you have time to get together with Fred, he'll update you on what really happens. Yeah. Okay. The copper actually is for algae uh, yep. more so than the herbicide. But uh, the, yeah, we can talk more about Yeah, take it. that offline if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, okay, what do we have on the computer? Erica? Much. Um, I saw that Donna asked, did someone say New Windsor is not a lot of fire pit? And then Jason clarified that New Windsor can have open fire pits and chimneys are okay. Yep. Um, and then I just wanted to give a heads up, anything that we talked about for events or um, anything like that, the links are in the chat box and we can include them, Wally, if you'd like, at the bottom of the YouTube videos when we post them. Um, that includes like the yard sale and Jason's rain garden and the information Jason posted on invasive species and items like that. And then the other thing I just wanted to say was um, that a Bart Raphael son um, as a community service project for school, um, improved the picnic area up on reserve five. So he put a parameter around the outside of the picnic area with some nice pavers, made it look really good. So if you're up by reserve five, um, which is kind of up off like Walnut, check that out. Excellent, great job. Yep. Anything else in the chat box at all, Erica, we have to go over? Nope. Nope. Okay, any last comments on anybody online on the Zoom? Okay, that concludes the meeting. Just again, now I am not Erica, and the furthest thing from Erica. <laughs> She's like amazing. I'll get through the technical stuff. She definitely has the personality, though. So, okay, thank you, everybody. That concludes the meeting. Yeah. Right, a motion to uh, adjourn. The second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, meeting is adjourned. And recording there.